What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fye and my man, Eric She Tabor. We are going to be talking through the NFL slate for Thursday, uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, happy early Thanksgiving to you all, or those of you who are watching this early that morning because you want to get all the plays. Uh, here we are on Tuesday trying to figure out what we're going to do for what's actually like a pretty good slate as far as Thanksgiving slates go. Like we don't have, you know, actually Chicago would be fun now, but like the old Chicago's being on there against Detroit and all this. We got Buffalo against Detroit, which would be fun. We've got the Giants and Cowboys, which is a probably as big a spread as you see for two teams with what the same record. Um, and you've got New England and uh, and Minnesota, so all all good real life uh, football games. I feel like I feel like there's a, this is going to be kind of a fun one. Sheets. Yeah. So what's interesting, just overall, remember, remember, keep in mind that it's going without saying, but each game is an island game. So, and you'll have, you know, you'll probably have enough time in between games to fiddle around if you want to fiddle around. And, you know, I know Thanksgiving's a rough day to do stuff like that, but, you know, just let you know that it's probably optimal to mm -hmm. continue to keep, uh, to keep, uh, you know, reassessing throughout the course of the slate. Um, just a little headline. I'm going to probably, it's going to be hard to do, but I'm going to attempt to post showdown um slates for at least one of them but th this is what you guys could do if you guys want to play the showdowns you could just take the projections from the whatchamacallit from the the, the, the main slate that i'm going to put up there and just insert that in the saber sim you know what i mean because the projections don't change the salaries do um and i'm going to probably play all of it i'm probably going to play the three game slate i'm probably going to play all three showdown slates so nice. um yeah, and if I if I have time, I'll put up like a, a video on on the showdown slates, uh, maybe like Wednesday night or something like that. But um, yeah, listen, Bobby's had you've you've had some some good success in this, in these uh, Thanksgiving Day slates. Not more than I have. I've never ever really had a had a real big sweat in the Thanksgiving Day slate. Um, so I'll I'll follow your lead as far as this goes. But my first overall impression of this is that while you have three, you would think okay games or whatever. I I, I have. I really feel as though the three favorites just really dominate the board um, with respect to who you're supposed to play. Um, and, 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 and I think you'll have three favorites winning with, with very little hassle. If you want to know the truth. I think the Buffalo wins handily. I think Dallas wins handily. And I think Minnesota wins handily. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if that's going to affect how you play DFS. I guess it should, but that's my, that's my impression of the day of football. Yeah. I just more meant the games are like, Buffalo, Buffalo, Detroit could be fun. You know what I mean? And well, hold on. I have a question. This is an interesting yeah. question. Did Buffalo stay there? So they, they supposedly went, were going home for two days. I don't know what they ended up doing. They were going to go home for two days and then come back. It's not that far um, to spend some, some family time or whatever. I, if I were them, I would have just stayed there. It just seems like have your family come in or whatever, take a couple of days off and enjoy the beautiful city of Detroit in the winter. Um, <laughs> It's, I only mean that slightly joking. They have a lot of Michigan friends, so I don't I don't hate Michigan. Let me tell you something. The city of Buffalo is no bargain either. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What are you going back to exactly? <laughs> All right, let's pull up your screen. Let's talk about these game by game because I do think I, I, I sort of see where you're coming from. Um, it's still like I just I, from a from a DFS perspective, even if it's a handling game, like it's not like Buff Buffalo is in no position to just. Oh, we're up by a bunch. We're we're going to call off the dogs, and they don't like doing it anyway because they don't really run the ball. So I think that your your number one stack is pretty clearly Josh Allen to Diggs, Davis, include McKenzie in your mix and Knox. Um, I, I do think this stands out as being you know the the best of the games, and we know De, you know De, Detroit is sort of like you know the the gold mine for for DFS in general. Even as the even as they only scored eighteen points last week, Daniel Jones I believe was still the second highest scoring quarterback on the slate. Um, even as the Giants couldn't couldn't score, um, and two of the players, the millionaire maker, were on that lineup, I believe, at least one was. Um, anyway, so all this to say that I like the the the, the chalky plays here. I, li I like the 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 the, 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 the Allen to to Diggs Davis or Diggs Knox or Davis Knox, Diggs McKenzie Knox. Davis, all of those combinations will be uh, probably my highest owned ones, and it's they're chalky, unfortunately. So, I'm gonna have to come how to find a way to come to grips with that. Um, with the Detroit side, you have a the the, the, the two obvious runbacks, which would be Jamal Williams and uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. Can I throw an idea at you of something that could happen that that maybe is reaching a little bit? And I'm just kind of curious your thoughts. 
What about if, since because uh, Jamal Williams, who is a little bit older, um, but he's been getting the bulk of the work. He had the big game again on, on Sunday and Swift got in the end zone as well. Is it, is it maybe a week where you could on a short week, go to the guy who's actually been not playing because he was kind of injured, but is the more talented back in Swift and maybe, maybe gamble that way. So I'm, I'm open to that. I mean, that's one way to get a little bit different within these stacks. Um, the other way is to play again, the Khalif Raymond or DJ shark. If, if shark is out again, I think Raymond is, will, will stand out, but, uh, but I like this game quite a bit. So I'm going to be getting all different kinds of pieces. Anybody I, I forgot you could, you could m- throw into the mix Brock, Wright At tight end. I don't know if I want to do that. That just seems like a little bit too thin for me, but it's, it's a game that should have a lot of action. And, um, and I'm certainly going to, you know, make it my priority, I think, to start the, to start the day. Yeah. I mean, I would. I was hoping. I was hoping. Whatever. It was, I was expecting because it's a Thanksgiving Day slate that the pricing would get really soft, like the NBA does on Christmas, like all this stuff. But uh, they didn't do. They didn't do anybody any favors. I don't think. Um, but but look, if you want to like you know teach your teach your, your two year old or your or your or somebody doesn't know anything about DFS how to play, I mean you can certainly start off with with this. You know you can play Josh Allen, like you said, with Diggs, and let's have, you know play Dawson Knox, I guess. And run it back with it and uh, St. Brown, who, by the way, I think he's probably the underpriced um, guy in, in this board. Um, yeah. Now, yes, Buffalo's Buffalo's defense is good, but 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 I, I think I think he should be more than sixty six hundred. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Look at Buffalo's last two weeks against number one uh, wide receivers, though. We saw Amari Cooper light him up on Sunday, and they yeah. got lit up, they got completely lit up the week before by Justin Jefferson. So yeah. So if you can if you can play a lineup like this, I mean, this is certainly makes a lot of sense. The problem is, I mean, like, where, where are you going to get the value? You could probably do it. So so Allen, St. Diggs, Knox, St. Brown. Like you said, you could play Khalif Raymond, and I like the Swift idea in in principle. More to the point, I don't I don't like the Jamal Williams play at all. I mean, like his 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 smash percentage or his his get there variation is really just dependent on on Detroit getting down to the two yard line. You know what I mean? Like exactly the two yard line. He, he's just, he, he, li- he literally is the leading touchdown <laughs> getter in all of the NFL from running backs, mostly because he goes in from one yard. Okay. Or, right. or from, from two yards. So uh, that's going to, that's going to affect his projection. It's going to probably make it look better than it is. Um, I, I don't want to play Jamal Williams. If anything, like you said, I think I would take a shot at maybe a, a getting healthier uh, DeAndre Swift. I don't think Jamal Williams is the answer for Detroit in this game. Um, I think that uh, if any of the running backs would be in play, it would be De- uh, Swift. And like you said, Khalif Raymond is always kind of that second guy. Um, I don't think I'm going to go with the B right. Uh, for me, it'll either be Khalif Raymond or um, what's his name? Uh, Mark. Or St. Brown. The other one, by the way, is it is if Shark is out and Reynolds is out, Tom Kennedy is not terrible. Um for a Thanksgiving Day slate, I might I might include him in my in my uh interesting my pool. That was one I didn't come across yet, but that's probably because I still have Shark in. Um yeah. yeah, that's interesting. All right. Well, let's move over to uh to your Giants and the Cowboys here. Um boy, the the, the Giants. The two, the two, the two frauds were exposed last week: the Giants and the Vikings. <laughs> yep, absolutely, absolutely, what we've been saying. Um, I still think, like, so I always have this thing about teams that get pressure against quarterbacks that can run. I think that it always gives an edge to the quarterbacks that can run from a fantasy perspective. Yeah, um, I think you're going to see a ton of ownership on Barkley, and I'm okay with just fading that. Um, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to play Barkley. Yeah, I mean, it's just, and we just see this against Cowboys every time these guys project well. What I would do is I would take a shot on whoever is at wide receiver, which looks like the two guys who we liked who were good last week, like Wandale are not going to be in today this time. Slayton. Slayton's good. Slayton is yes. Yeah, so, oh yes, right. Oh yeah, it was Wandale, only Wandale. Sorry, my bad. Um but but it, I mean if if it is just you know, like maybe maybe this is the week, Sheets. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> maybe Don't it's do the it. week. Um, down multiple scores, maybe maybe they get him involved, but or or you could even consider Isaiah Hudgens. So I I do think that that the Giants receivers just based on volume because and and potential game flow, I do think they're definitely a, a little bit interesting. And 
the, the Giants and Cowboys, I mean, you say it's what I say, whatever, but they tend to play each other pretty tough. And this Cowboys team seems pretty clearly a lot better. Um, and someone's going to have to explain to me why Tony Pollard is not the highest owned running back on this slate. Uh, I don't understand it. I think Pollard is clearly the answer, but it's a small enough slate to where I'll say you include some Zeke. Um, I just think Pollard is is making it very, very clear that he's the better running back, which we've been saying for a long time now. Yeah, but but Zeke still is going to get that goal line work. He'll, he'll get some. He'll get some of it. I mean, what Pollard gets it. They they both been getting it. You know what I mean? Um, I guess when you score forty points and your quarterback doesn't do anything, that's what happens. But I mean, we've got Pollard with you know he had two receiving touchdowns last week. Um, he's had he had four rushing touchdowns the previous two weeks. Zeke is going to get some of that work. He had the two rushing touchdowns last week. So I mean, there there is a there's definitely a path where you could you could play the blowout Dallas angle and play both these guys, um, or you could play uh, Dak Prescott with CeeDee Lamb and Tony Pollard. And I think that's very, very viable. Um, I also think Gallup, uh, Gallup, I like a lot. I like a little better than Brown this week, even though they're both all valuable. But I, I think you want receivers um, from Dallas, for uh, at least one of the receivers from Dallas for sure. And I think you want one of Pollard or Zeke for sure. And I want one of the Giants receivers. But as of right now, that's Darius Slayton. He's cheap enough but I'm not all that excited about the Barkley as the highest owned player kind of a thing, even though uh, I think he's fine. I do like, uh, by the way, I do like uh, both frauds this week uh, against the spread. I think the giants, I think the giants are cu- coming off the, the fraud exposure game and Dallas coming off the biggest road win. And like the, literally the history of the Dallas Cowboys. That's a long history going back home on Thanksgiving on a short week. I think giants are probably live there. Um, so, uh, how, what do you think of like in general? Like, so I think about the Daniel Jones play for a minute. The idea of being the Dallas have got so much pressure that he's just going to be running for his life. So the question is, is that is that a good thing or a bad thing for for a fantasy quarterback on a short slate to be running for your life? You know, like he does he does score and he does run. Um, yeah, he does. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be enough though. Um, uh, you have like Josh Allen who can legitimately put up thirty fantasy points. Um, I don't, I, I just, I, I don't think I want to go the Daniel Jones route. Um, I think people are going to do it. Um, the other thing to remember from the Giants Dallas, the first game they played, and this is, this is actually quite amazing is that Daniel Jones was pressured more times in that game than he had been in literally his entire career. Um, Dallas was just in his freaking face the whole game. Um, and I don't see any reason why that's not going to happen again. Um, so I think putting all that together, if I think the giants are kind of live, but I can't envision a way that they score. I think the only way those two things make sense is to maybe fade the Dallas offense. Um, mm. And, and, and that, that's, that, that probably what I'm going to end up doing. It's, mm. it's like an impossible thing to, to do. Right. Let I me mean, have, Dallas, what are they, seven points? I don't know what their favorite, but it's got to be seven at least, right? Ten. Um, ten. And and Pollard just scored 40 fantasy points in this last game where, you know, whatever. I, I don't think that Pollard's going to be – I mean, I think he's, he's – I think at the end of the day, he's probably going to be the most popular. He just has to be. But, I feel but, like he should be. So I'm Right, I'm right. Um, he's got the game script. He's got the whole thing. What are they going to play? Dalvin Cook? Is that really what's, I, I don't know. Um, you could absolutely, so, by the way, get away with playing Tony Pollard and Zeke here. I mean, Ooh, interesting together. Just think about it because first of all, it would have worked last week. That's one thing. Yeah. Um, it would have worked. The giants just gave up four. you know, they gave up the, the, the touchdowns, Jamal, they gave up four rushing touchdowns last week, four to Jamal Williams, three to Jamal Williams, right. one to Swift. Why wouldn't we think that, this would be this could be a similar situation for a team that's even more effective. No, it definitely could be. Um uh but I think that if I have to take a like a stand of some kind, I th- I think I would rather not I would rather, it's just so uncomfortable to do. That's why I think I'm gonna do it. Probably end up fading the the, the what's gonna look like like awesome Dallas players. <laughs> you know, like 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 uh like Lamb has got it's gotta look like one of the best plays. Um and I don't know. I, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll just fade it for just for funsies, I guess. Um, obviously, the Dallas defense. What, what's Dallas defense? Eight thousand. I mean, what, what's I, I can't imagine what the Dallas defense is. Um, <laughs> no, they're actually uh, they are thirty seven hundred. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm probably going to be more, I don't say off this game, but I can't be off it. I, I, I don't mind the slate in play. If, if you get any news out of the Giants about what they're going to do here, you, you know who they were using a lot? Not a lot, but he was on the field a lot at least. You said Hodgins, but also this, this David Sills they kind of like. Um, hmm. And then who's that tight end? The, the Bellinger, is he back? Um, no, he's not He's not supposed to be back. No, no he's out too. Um, yeah, maybe the, the Tanner Hudson at 2,500. Maybe that's not the worst play in the world. I don't know. You're just not getting much savings off of anybody else. They just don't throw it to the tight end ever, but they don't, they don't, I, but I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to think of it. You know, it's, he's going to be under freaking pressure. What else, what else are you going to do? But try no, to, I, I hear you. I hear you. Um, you know, they'll do the end up for You know, Barkley end up getting there at a loss somehow. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Well, it depends on what getting there is. I like, I sort of like the other running backs that the William Swift at Pal Pollard, Esco, uh, uh, Zeke. I just, I, I'm sort of siding a little bit with the other ones ahead of, ahead of Barkley at the moment. Yeah. Just because the ownership, to be honest, yeah. and Barkley's price is probably too cheap uh, in general, but it's a tough matchup. Yeah. All right. Uh, what do you got for you? You mentioned sort of that you like the. Uh, the yeah, the- I think Minnesota takes to win. I think New England's just the worst. Um, uh, and I, I think I think Minnesota wins this by, I mean, handily. Um, uh, I don't know exactly what that means as far as fantasy goes, except I'm probably. Uh, you know that's going to be my stand. You know I'm going to do. I'm going to play no New England offensive players. That'll be not exactly the biggest take. The way all, all that means is that I'm not playing Andre Stevenson, right? Because there's really nobody else that that is going to show up as a great New England play. I guess. Um, uh, so I'm going to I'm going to fade the New England probably the whole side of the ball, and I'll go back to the other. I'll go back to Thielen and 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 Jefferson and 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 you know with any luck there'll be enough narrative that. Uh, that what's his name, that Belichick is going to just try to take away Jefferson. and Maybe Jefferson won't be 100% owned, and I'll just play him. Um, may, maybe that's the idea, is play Jefferson instead of Diggs. Um, Thielen is pretty criminal at 4,900, but it's not, it's, not, it's not exactly done anything this year at all. You know, it's like, he's, what is, who, who are his fantasy points? 5, 10, 10, 12? I mean... Only like three games get there at forty nine hundred. I don't know. I'm just a sucker for it, I guess. And then, and then, I guess we'll go back to KJ Osborne at three K. Mm-hmm. Um, Hawkinson has done not, li- done, well, not done nothing. He's done hasn't done anything really for the new team. But I'd go back to him. So that that'll be my take, I guess. Is play play the Minnesota guys. Um, play the Minis- uh, play the Minnesota defense. That's actually the best play, I think. Um, new England has nothing as far as I'm concerned, to offer offensively. So I, I would play the Minnesota defense and do I want to play Dalvin Cook at 70, at a very reasonable 7,400. I don't know. These, these are the decisions I'm making, but I'm, I'm going to end up, I'm going to be end up rooting for not that much. And I'll be end up probably with most of my exposure from this game, I think. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, um, I, I, it's, it's ugly to look with new England. I just, I have a hard time believing that Minnesota is going to beat the hell out of them personally. Yeah, I I, I, I'm on the uh, the side. The problem is New England. You have Stevenson's going to be one of the highest on. He's actually projected as the highest on player. Stevenson. Um, I would just say be careful because Damian Harris looked actually good. He was like the only the only pa- uh, Patriot who looked good against the 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 whatever the Jets last week. Um, and uh, Jacoby Myers is going to look like a reasonable play. The guy who I would say to take a shot with is Devonte Parker at 3900. Uh, for New England, I think Hunter Henry's reasonable at 3,100 at tight end if you wanted to play it. But I'm not, I like you, I'm not overly excited about their offense. I just thrown out the guys. Hawkinson should be a very popular play, but I like him at tight end. He's significantly more talented than any, every other tight end on this slate. Um, I really like uh, Osborne. I think that he's my favorite of the uh, of the value guys we talked about. Uh, he's heavily involved in the, in, the, in the game last week. He's got to throw it away in general. Um, Jefferson is too cheap, so he's gonna. I actually think Jefferson's gonna be more at least as owned as Diggs. Um, and then Dalvin Cook, who I like, but I don't like quite as much as the cheaper running backs, uh, partly because Madison will snake some of his looks, and uh, New England's defense is pretty, pretty good against the run. Yep. So, this is the less interesting of the games, but game a game that I'll probably try to have a little bit more exposure to just because of it, and that would be in the form of Devontae Parker as a cheapo option. Ooh. 
and, and KJ Osborne. And I think if you play those two guys and save there and, you know, use just use this game just for value, you've got sort of all the, all the ability to do whatever you want elsewhere. Um, I, again, just kind of look at the running backs for a second. Mm -hmm. um, the, the only, there's one, two, three running backs that I believe are just like guaranteed to be the top guy, right? One would be Devin Singletary uh, on their team, right? The other would be Barkley, and the other would be Dalvin Cook. Um, I think you can make a case for Detroit being something of a, of a who knows. Dallas, you have to think that Pollard is sort of the man, but listen, Zeke's not freaking, he's like the ring of ring of honor dude there. You know what I mean? He, they're not running him out of town so fast, you know? Um, and then New England, like you said, I mean, Damian Harris is like always like, like getting in the, getting in their face. Now tell me a little bit getting in uh Ramondre Stevenson's face, but let, t tell me more about this, that last take you just had about, about Madison. Has he actually been getting some work from, from Dalvin Cook? Well, the thing is with Madison is that he always is a part of like, like their, your usual plans. He didn't get a bunch of work the other day because it was a weird yeah. game. You're looking at usually just a few care, but he's on the field some and he's, and he'll do some pass catching. I just I feel like he sometimes can snake a little bit, and and if I felt like it was a better matchup for the running backs, I still would say Cook, Cook is a priority. But I just think that I like the the slightly cheaper guys a little bit better. I feel like um, I, I do I do I like the idea of Zeke and Pollard together even, um, and I like the idea of of Swift potentially as a low owned option instead of Williams. And the thing with Singletary, we just got to hope if, if you play him, you just got to hope that nobody beats like fifteen or eighteen fantasy points because. He, he just doesn't ever have that really big game. And I'll tell you, if you want to make a really weird play, the play to me would be James Cook. Mm -hmm. um, James Cook, they they like this kid, and they got gave him run last week in a game that was competitive. He had 11 carries for 86 yards. If he sneaks into the end zone, a 4,400 guy on a three-game slate, he could really change your, change your builds, and I don't think anybody's playing James Cook. Um, so maybe that's, maybe that's a th way you could get a little bit different because, because I, I don't think that like Singletary at 30 some odd percent it ever makes sense, especially when he lost so many of his carries to James Cook last week. I think did Cook out carry him actually. I think he did. Um, and you have one guy at 4,400, the other guy 5,700. Okay. Uh, no, he didn't, he did not carry him, but 11, 11 carries versus 18. Well, then forget what I just said then. This is, and it's not Singletary. Then it's just Barkley and Dalvin Cook. Yeah, and the one thing that's worrisome also about they, they did trade for Naheem Hines in in, Buff, in Buffalo, so it just takes even a little bit more work away from Singletary. So I have Singletary a little below the other guys personally. I heard his name mentioned a couple of times this past weekend. Um, Naheem Hines. Uh, Hines. Oh no, just a couple of plays. Yeah, I just okay. had a couple of plays, but uh, they went for him on a big like a, a big go route. Like, oh know, okay, I knew there was something. So they, and they they just missed it. So so I have the the priorities as the Allen the Allen stack. Unfortunately, is my favorite. Um, I do think playing one of the Giants receivers, including getting creative with it, I do like the idea of the, the cheapos that I mentioned, KJ Osborne and Parker to open up salary. Um, I like the Dallas running game, but I may switch if the ownership all goes that way to to, to maybe playing some some DAC lineups with uh with and I, I really like Gallup this week. Um, I want to say that that's that's my favorite of these sort of weird spend ones. Um, I think that, you know, we, we can't really judge the last week's game, but he had seven targets the week before six, the week before that. And I think that, uh, I think he's about, you know, I always like continuity on Thanksgiving slates. I always, that's why I always played Marvin Jones in Detroit. And for some reason, Marvin Jones always put up 20 some odd fantasy points on, 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 uh, on Thanksgiving. And Dallas has that continuity with Gallup and Dak, just because you have less time to prepare, less time to do things you tend to look for. And especially in a rivalry game, tend to look for your guys a little bit more, I'd say. And, and I think that Gallup is, uh, at a cheap enough price where he's, he's probably my favorite of those weird spend guys. Um, Hawkinson, my favorite tight end. And uh, you like, I, you like Hawkinson more than, than Knox and Schultz. Uh, he's more expensive, but if, if, if you, I mean, it's, I like him for raw points more than those. I mean, he's just yeah. the other. Yeah. I mean, he's, he gets nine or 10 targets every week. We're comparing him with guys who get like four or five, you know? Okay. Okay. And and he just has the the just the massive ceiling. And they did they did specifically go out and he was like the guy to get their 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 push. But I am loving what Knox is doing. And I don't even mind doing tight ends, double tight ends, especially on three game slates. Almost won me the afternoon slate this last week, but didn't quite get there. Um but yeah, it should be a fun Thanksgiving slate. We'll be back uh later in the week for uh for a preview of the Sunday slate, which kind of sucks because honestly, these games are better than a lot of the Sunday games are. <laughs> um 
So that's where I'm at. Sheets, anything else before we get out of here? Yeah. So hold on. Let's look at these prices for these quarterbacks. So I wonder if it's, if you're supposed to do something like play Daniel Jones by himself or something like that. Um, yeah. I, guess, I don't know. I guess not. I, I don't know. You can play him with Slayton. No, no, definitely. I, I think I think it's reasonable because you're, you're saving so much off the Josh Allen and Josh Allen sort of, has to get you in the 30 range probably because somebody else is probably getting 25 or so. And there's so much. I mean, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something else. I mean, this UCL is no joke. Um, the, the thing that Josh Allen has. Yeah. Um, and uh, listen, he, he, he somehow like had an amazing, I don't want to say amazing game, whatever he, he got through that Minnesota game and he was very, listen, they're, they're lucky. They didn't really need him near the end. Uh, Cause he was not great in this game. Uh, yeah. uh, against Cleveland. He certainly hasn't looked great. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, before people go just jamming him in, I mean, something you kind of alluded to, I mean, Detroit, I mean, they're, they're, they're pesky. You know what I mean, like, like they, um, they, they, they pretty much like dominated the Giants. They really did. Mm-hmm. The Chicago game was kind of whatever, but they made, they held Green Bay to nine points. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. That was a weird one. Maybe they're, still, maybe they're still terrible. I don't know. We'll still see. No, but it's weird. The defense, which has been their worst in football all year, looked like looked like the best team in football the last couple of weeks. So yeah. very, very tricky to figure out these uh, these Lions for sure. But I like what you're saying about Allen. Even if that just gives you a reason to fade him, you want a reason to fade a, a chalky guy who's going to be the I most. I think so. so. So so maybe that that's what you could do. And I think what you could do is even, I mean, look, you could, you could play Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis because they're going to throw the ball a ton in Buffalo no matter what. And you could play Daniel Jones with with Slayton running it back with one or both of the Cowboy running backs. So then you have a stack of the Bills without using Allen, which I kind of like doing that. I think that's kind of an interesting route to build. The Brock Wright thing is going to be a tough sell for me only because. Yeah, of- I like these other tight ends. Like you said, if Hawkinson, I think Hawkinson, Knox and Schultz are three very, very good tight end plays. You totally know? agree. Yeah. Uh, Hawkinson, Knox and Schultz for sure. And, and And I would include a little bit of Hunter Henry in there. I mean. Um, we haven't really seen that really big game in a while, but I think that, uh, that having the job there and you always worry about like John getting some, some of the work instead. So you could throw him in the mix, but I, all right. I, so, so you want another I, one you want to remember it's a three game slate. It's not exactly a showdown, but you want to get a couple of hoodoos or whatever. Yeah. Um, just cause we didn't talk about it. I think Taekwon Thornton is, 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 has, has potential in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's only 3,300. So I'll just kind of just throw him in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you include him in the Devonte Parker category and KJ Osborne that I was talking about. Yeah. Um, but man, oh man, they went for Osborne on a big one too. Whew. One of these days. Um, all right, sheets. I think that's going to be good for now, uh, yeah. guys. Good luck to everybody this week. I will. I'll be around in Discord and whatnot. We have a big NBA slate tomorrow for you. We'll have a football yeah. Sunday. It's going to be a fun, a fun weekend while we're enjoying time with our family and sneaking away to go do some DFS stuff. So, (laughs) all right. Well, good luck to everybody. Good luck sheets. And I will uh, hopefully see you guys for live for NBA tonight. If not, I will see you tomorrow morning. Okay. Good luck, everybody. All right.